Hello everyone, today we will be talking about Ani, a sparkle and personal cheers. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Um, this is a uh, tier list. Um, this is, I guess, in response to Falcon, who, you know, God bless you. Um, I have a few differences of opinion, so you can see I uh, drew these funny little, funny little creatures here to represent the, uh, the characters, and I'm gonna give you my own take on a tier list, and, and this is going from, you know, D, C, B, A, S, but I like to label them because sometimes you don't know what they mean. This is completely unfiltered, by the way. This is just me. I don't got no script or nothing. Just rattling off my uh, my opinion. Um, the top is overtuned. This is not the equivalent of overpowered. Um, it's more characters that, in some way or another, their interaction with the game is, from a game design perspective, just unacceptable. Uh, and should probably be tuned down because of that. Perfect could be characters that you might think are overpowered. I think they're perfect the way they are. They should not be changed. They're very solid. Situationally perfect are characters that sometimes are the exact right tool for the job. And other times, uh, not so much. Mid-tier... You may find some of your favorite characters here. They are just one step down from perfect. Situationally perfect can sometimes be worse than mid-tier and sometimes be better than overtuned. You know, but they're very situational and that inconsistency is usually what puts them in the B tier. Mid mid-tier are consistent characters, but they are consistently lesser than perfect. And then we have Oh boy, what's this tier? Jobber Extreme. If you're not familiar with the term jobber, it's a wrestling term for a wrestler who is designed, hand-picked, and catered to lose every match they have and make other people look better. Now, that doesn't mean you can't win as these characters, or should I say character, um... But it's really difficult to win as this character. And if you've seen my two videos, you can you can bet your britches that it's certainly not going to be Arnie, and it is most certainly going to be Smog in Jobber Supreme. Um, Smog is the tankiest hero in the game. Let's let's get that out of the way. With the health that he gains on being hit, if you're say you're on a team with uh, someone who's got team healing, they pop that forty-eight to sixty percent damage reduction depending on you know sorry forty to sixty percent damage reduction depending on you know personal gears, and um, that's really good. He can go upwards of. 10,000 effective health, depending on if you got the fucking armor boost, depending on if you have, you know, really solid stuff. But even with 10,000 effective health, if a Freddy is running the right build and is outspacing you, and even if you, you know, hit him a couple of times, you were uh, controlling that spread. It's still a 50-50. You're still going to get out damaged in most cases. Uh, his DPS is just so lackluster. His rockets can be really good at sniping opponents. Wish they were just a tiny bit faster. Not the actual speed of the rocket, but the time from when you press the rocket button to the time where it comes out. You know, some characters, they have there's a time to their ability. Uh, if you're playing a shield character, first they, you know, you hit the shield button, they fiddle with their hands for about 0.5 seconds, and then they put up a shield. You hit the invisibility button on, a, on an invis character, they throw something on the ground like a smoke bomb, and they vanish 0 0.5, 0 0.75 seconds later. There is that 0.5 second delay. I wish it was like half that, like 0.25 second delay on... Uh, for both Doc and Smog. Speaking of Doc, um, he's going to be taking the first 
step into mid-tier. There's a few reasons why Doc is better than Smog. First one, his main gun is better. His missiles are the same. They're, both of them are missiles, really good. Situationally good abilities, because, you know, if you're playing against a, a ghost, you know, unless you hit the wall and you manage to bink, and then you pop him out of invisibility, you can't really do much. If you're going up against, say, um... Let's say you're going up against Sparkle, and you shoot a missile at her, she'll shrug that off and pump you twice in the mouth. But say you're going up against, like, uh, like Blot, or Hurricane, or Angel, and you manage to snap that shield in half, and then you pepper them down with your gun after the fact, Smog and, Smog and Doc are really, really good for that. Um, and Smog is slower than Doc. Doc is faster, he can position his missiles easier, he's better at using his missiles and his main gun. He doesn't have quite the bulk, but he does have access to team healing. He can put the 50% damage reduction on himself, which is really good. It's really good to just be able to say, okay, I'm smog now. You Half your speed, you go to smog speed, but you double your effective health from 15, 1700 to 3000, just like Smog is. So you go from being this kind of like, oh, I'm a Freddy Smog hybrid. My weapon is not nearly as good as Freddy's. Let's, let's cut that out. But, you know, I do solid DPS at a medium range, and I have rockets for long range. And then whenever I think I'm going to be in trouble, bang. I'm regenning like Smog, and I'm way tankier like Smog, but I'm slower like Smog. Him having the ability to be that situational tank is really good, but it's not good enough to take him out of mid-tier. And I feel like I've spent long enough... Rockets are good, uh, but everything about these two characters make the Rockets not enough to take them out of the bottom tiers. Um, but don't think that Doc is going to be the only one in this tier, because I think there's a handful of heroes that you could categorize as, like, middle of the road. Blot is the next one. Granted, Blot is better than Doc. Blot's pretty damn good, all things considered. But... As a sniper, he's most likely the weakest one. If I am up against a blot, there is not much that he can do besides, you know, aiming down this hallway, keeping an eye on this choke, and then hitting high damage shots from there, from behind an impenetrable wall. Impenetrable unless you're dog or... Dog. Doc or smog. That's good, but he has absolutely no way to be aggressive. You know? If you're playing... I'm just going to get this out of the way. Satoshi's going to be higher up on this list. Satoshi has that kind of defensive capability. He doesn't have nearly the vision range or anything. He's not a sniper. He's an assault rifle, but he has the capability to push in a little bit. He's got that little bit of aggressiveness that makes him more well-rounded. Blot is always on the defensive. There's nothing you can do as Blot besides shake your fist at your opponent and shoot a completely unaimed shot at them and hope that it hits them. That's the only thing you can do aggressive. It's completely luck-based. 90% of the time, you're not going to hit that. He has to be defensive, and he's not quick because of that. So, you know, he's got terrible survivability, a terrible maneuverability, but he's not as difficult to use as some of the other snipers. He's got great damage, and the four shield ability is pretty good. I think that puts him in mid-tier. There's no one thing he excels at, but he overall is a mid-tier character. Speaking of mid-tier, um, I think the next one in mid-tier is an Surprise, surprise, even after... I think he was going to be situational or something, but after the shield speed nerf, Hurricane's definitely down here now. Um, when you pop shield, you are you don't have that ambusher speed. You more have, like, trooper speed. Troopers can now turn around and run away from Hurricane, so the only people that you're really going to take down are tanks, which two of them can outright counter your shield, one being Bastion. Bastion's going to wreck a hurricane every time I, either of them shield clash. The other's uh, Smog. Smog's just going to mess you up. Um, 
by demolishing your shield and then washing you. The old peel and wash. Um, it, scouts are going to run away from you if you pop shield. Uh, you do counter snipers when you pop shield. And only when you pop shield. When your shield is off cooldown, you might be the worst character in the game. Worse than Smog. But when you have it up, you, and you're good at angling it and pushing in, you're pretty good. He's amazing in sabotage, obviously, because of the quick timings to fights. T taking mid is hurricane, or more than one hurricane. Me and my friends, if we're squatted up and we're up against the vines, I'm going to call my friend and I'm going to be like, Hey, there's a hurricane coming through! And we all switch to hurricane, and that's funny, and we can win around really cheekily because of that, but overall, I'd say he is not that amazing anymore, because used to be, you pop his shield, and he's still ambusher speed. You could chase down troopers with that, and anyone who wasn't a Satoshi, say, Levi, say, I mean, Doc would probably, if, you're, if Doc hit the missile because you were quicker, now you're slower, you're definitely going to get your shield broken by a missile because you're not fast enough to dodge it. Uh, but if you ran into other ambushers, Cyclops, Arnie, Sparkle, you annihilate them. Snipers, you'd annihilate them. Troopers, you'd annihilate them. Tanks, besides the two who can counter you, you'd annihilate them. And the only issue was that, you know, scouts can run away from you. S but now, you're slower when you pop shield. He's kind of low down on the list now. Um... And I'm going to say, originally, I was thinking Sparkle was somewhere in here, but now the disparity between Hurricane and Sparkle is low enough that I think Sparkle deserves to be in the situationally perfect tier. And I'll tell you why, because she's a very consistent hero. The situational... Uh, capability of Sparkle has nothing to do with her. It's not like Hurricane, where it's like, oh, is her grenade off cooldown? No, your grenade's always off cooldown. You always have, like, five of those things. People who are pyro heroes, especially Sparkle, Freddy, Firefly, they stack grenades like candy, like Pop Rocks. They just hoard those, and then they're like, oh, well, I can't get in. Time to make the other person regret opening the game. Toss six grenades down a choke. By the time you're finished tossing the five, you've got another one charged up. So, bing, 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 bing. You've probably annihilated at least two people with those. If you're good at throwing nades, if you know how to, you know, bank them off walls, get them to slow down right where you want them, Sparkle can be good at that. If you are playing against other ambushers, Sparkle is amazing. If you're playing against scouts, uh, Sparkle can counter a lot of scouts. Uh, if you're playing against um, tanks, Sparkle can annihilate tanks, especially if you have the triple barrel. If you're playing against troopers, okay, you know, a little bit of a 50-50. Sparkle's not going to kill a Levi, Sparkle's not going to kill a Satoshi, but Sparkle could probably kill a Stalker. Sparkle could definitely kill Tess. If you go against snipers, Sparkle's dead. And the game is loaded with snipers right now. Sparkle is the only... Sparkle is the only, the only ambusher to have absolutely no out to a sniper holding a choke, or an assault rifle holding a choke. Cyclops, who, by the way, is also going to be in this tier, has the option of, you know, scanning and attempting to flank them and outrange them when Cyclops knows their focus was something else. Cyclops can wait them out. Cyclops is a lot more patient than Sparkle because if someone tries to push Cyclops, he immediately punishes them for that. If someone tries to push Sparkle, they can still outrange her where they can't with Cyclops. But if you're being focused down by a sniper with either of these two heroes, usually you have no out. Hurricane can shield and push in. Arnie can simply jump over the wall. These two have absolutely no out. But the difference being Cyclops Cyclops has more of a range. So I think both of these two are pretty specific in their role of being supportive uh, ambushers. They're both pretty damn loud, so it's not like you're always going to be flanking with them. Even with a movement speed and quietness build on either of these two, it's not like you're going to be flanking a whole lot. You're going to be pushing in around corners, sure, clearing out the close range, but you're not going to be going like the whole way around like you would as a scout. Cyclops, scan is amazing. Uh, if you play well, 
like there are some days where I'm not playing well and I scan at the wrong time and then a ghost or a stalker just messes me up. But if you scan well, you counter invisibility, which is by far the best ability in the game. Um, if you scan properly, you can learn where everybody is around you. And in a game where normally your vision covers like a 30 degree 45 degree cone in front of you knowing everything 360 and not having to flick around all the time is really really useful scan abilities you got to know that these are really good but if cyclops gets t and you know what i'm gonna toss raven in here as well i know some people might think raven is perfect i think he's got a little bit of the same issue as cyclops and i think they're really close if you, are, as Cyclops or Raven, get touched first, you lose. If you touch the other person first, you win. Because, as Raven, your range increases dramatically by the time you touch someone. Which means, bing bing, they're done. If you finish that person as Raven, you annihilate everyone around them because they get hit with that, what, what is it, like two, three seconds done? Cyclops, now two second blind after he gets his first pick. These two can annihilate the 1v many scenario if they get the first pick. If they are in a 1v1 though, and they get touched first, they don't have a lot of bulk, and their range is highly dependent on the disparity of range. Cyclops decreases the other person's range Raven increases his own on first touch. So, both of them are highly reliant on getting the first pick, and that's why they're situationally perfect. If you are the aggressor, as these two, and you get that first touch, and the other team doesn't see you coming, you can annihilate the entire team. If you don't, you are not quite mid-tier, but you're certainly not a perfect character. Both of these characters have their flaws. And the big flaw between these two is they don't quite have the bulk to survive higher, you know. Cyclops, as weird as it sounds, is the lightest of the shotgun heroes. Arnie's got more health. Hurricane has a little bit less health, but a huge armor pool. And Sparkle has, wow, just the thickest health bar out of all of them. And Raven, you're pretty small as Raven, too. Maybe not like... Angel small, but once again, Angel has that that armor, right? And now I'm going to go into a little bit more of the controversial takes. Ghost is B-tier. He is situationally perfect. And the reason why he's situationally perfect and not perfect, and I've been, these past few days, I have been, when I'm not rocking Cyclops or Raven, I've been kind of getting washed by a handful of ghosts. I know they're good. The problem is, like, they, they work well supportively, they work well at the beginning of the game. Ghost has absolutely no way to take down the bulkiest of characters. you Even with his highest damage build, if he's going up against a Smog, if he's going up against a Dragoon, a Bastion, a Leviathan, if he's going up against any really big character, not to mention that he also gets, you know, demolished by grenade spam, he gets demolished by the new hero, Tess, he has some, let's just say, counters. There's characters that he counters outright, any character that relies on being too defensive, if you're playing the blot, you better watch out, you know? Ghost is really good in certain scenarios, and in other scenarios, he might be the worst character in the game because of how light he is and how much he relies on being right behind the enemy when they're not looking. And I, I know what you're thinking. This is kind of like, like, in, like I play TF2. The spy is really good when right behind the enemy when they're not looking, but also every character is good at that. Ghost just has the ability to get there easier, so he makes these situations more plentiful, but when he's not in those situations, when he's not behind the enemy when they're not looking, he is the worst character in the game, and he will get demolished by basically anything. Um, and then compare that to, you know, Raven, who is also pretty light, but can be in front of the enemy and still wipe a squad. Whereas Ghost has, once Ghost gets one pick, if the teammates of that person are not bots, they will usually trade the Ghost. Oh, my teammate went down, the Ghost also goes down. And guess what? 
the team that just killed the ghost is right by their buddy. And the ghost had to flank all the way around, and his team is not able to revive him. So it's a net loss for the ghost team in a lot of scenarios. Of course, there's a lot of scenarios where the ghost can just burn house, but a lot of the time it's because the, te- the people he's killing are either bots or brain deads. I'm also going to put Blot's counterpart, Slayer, in the situationally perfect tier. Uh, I'll reorganize these at the end. This is not like the order of which how good they are in this tier, but Slayer is... Let's just say Slayer is situational. If you are behind a wall with scope and visor and damage boost, and you have your thermal ready, and the enemy team doesn't know you're there... Slayer's the best character in the game by far. You pop that, you pick one, the fire rate and damage of all of your team is increased by 50%, you pick another. If you're good, you have all personal gears, say, or if you got four personal gears and two dark parts, you can wipe the enemy easily. Maybe even get a fourth if there's some third partiers in there before your thermal goes off cooldown and you get the charge back because you picked at least one. However, if you're wandering around and you're not aimed down and you're just looking for like you're looking for armor or something and someone behind you comes up and says, "Hey, what's up?" Slayer's automatically the worst character in the game unless you have an aim- unless you have an unaimed build where your whole build relies around hitting no scopes. Unless that's the case, you flick around, you miss your shot, maybe your drone does 200 damage. But it's all on you. Slayer is just the worst at getting flanked. His damage, best in the game. His ability, Thermal, is amazing. His maneuverability is okay, but if you're running a build where you have to aim down, you are always going to be slow because you're always trying to slowly peek around a corner and not lose that aimed uh, status. Your survivability is low. Your maneuverability is, you know, it's... It's sniper speed, but you're always aimed down, so it's even slower than that. And the ease of... He's the hardest character to use in the... mm, Him and Cyclops are both really difficult to use. I would say he's the hardest, though. Because Cyclops, you don't have to worry about that. uh, About whether you're aimed or not. Cyclops, literally, his support ability is everybody in his radius aims faster. I guess Cyclops with Slayer is really good. Because you have the speed it takes for Slayer to aim down sights. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, if these two are queued together, if you have a Cyclops with a Slayer, Slayer gives the damage bonuses and all that on Cyclops on hit, making him easily the best ambusher, and then Cyclops gives Slayer the ability to aim down a lot quicker. That could be a really powerful comp now that I think about it. Um, But don't think Force and Arms is done in situational tier. I think Bertha belongs in here as well. Bertha requires either it requires sight in order to make full use of suppressive fire. Otherwise, she's a mid she's a mid tier tank. But if she can use suppressive fire properly, she's overtuned. And, and even then, probably more like perfect because they just nerfed um, her. You know, slowdown and all that stuff. Bertha, if you have a scan hero, if you have a thermal hero, or you have one or two dead teammates who's able to look at the enemies for you while they're dead, Bertha's really, really good. If you don't have that and you're shooting blind, Bertha is not a great tank. She's not smog bad. Her her ability to stay still and have a huge aimed range, um, her ability to be really tanky in her own right tankier than you know dragoon or leviathan and be able to take a pounding and also slow down the enemies as they come in which means she has more time of shooting them before they can shoot her that's really good and when you get a kill you do more damage to everybody in her radius you know she is a defensive like bunker down hero who's really good at the defensive part as well as being able to be a little aggressive by activating suppressive fire and suppressing the enemy She's good in certain situations, but if you don't have the right comp, Bertha is most certainly not a character for you. If you're solo queuing, Bertha is one of the worst characters. If you're queuing with friends, if you've got a uh, if you've got a squad v squad uh, team of you know Bertha and Bastion and Blot and frickin' all of those characters, Bertha's great. You know, 
And I'm also going to say that in Situationally Perfect, um, and I think this might be the last one in this tier, is Leviathan. Originally, Leviathan was in mid-tier, and then they decided to say, you know what? The turrets aren't good enough. We're giving them more range, more damage, more health, and Leviathan, we're giving him a 10% damage buff too, because why not? If you run a good piercing power build, or say you are lucky and you have all the personal gears for Leviathan and upgraded a lot, he's really, really, really tough. You know, he does great damage. Amazing range, even when moving. He can be mobile and be threatening, so he's got this great balance of like offense and defense and if he really wants to if he really wants to get cheeky he can leave turrets behind in like weird bushes and stuff that can just get one or two easy kills and once someone gets down to that you're alerted of it obviously in the kill feed you can go and protect and you know play off of your turret there was a time this this was yesterday i was playing uh sabotage and this was on defense for um underground base i picked leviathan my team is mostly bots the enemy team is a whole five squad divine comp all part of the, i forget what uh i think it was like me or something like that and i get a triple kill off leviathan by just leaving a turret behind me in spawn like not the helicopter the other part pointing kind of towards like where mid people might push all the way from mid to a through the ct spawn Two people walked into that and got immediately mowed down. They had shields up. One was Hurricane, one was Angel, rushing in, obviously. And the other one, who saw it and then backed out, was a Mirage. I peek around the corner. My bullets are penetrating through the corner. She can't hit me. I'm hitting her. Even if she used uh, Breakaway, she would have landed right back in the bullet stream. Because Leviathan can track Mirage through walls even after she uses that. Same thing with, uh, he's great at taking down invisible heroes. Because if they try to go invisible, he's still shooting. He's great at taking down a lot of characters. Basically everyone who's in the meta that is not Angel or Firefly, Leviathan's great at taking down. So he's got a lot of great situations where he's good. At the end of the day though, you're playing Leviathan who is tank speed with, like, trooper health. He's not a good amount of health on him. Even if you pop battle kit, he's got, like, 2,400 health. With a lot of armor, sure. He can get up to a lot of armor, but not very much health. And that really hurts him. That really hurts him. Um, he's got good damage. You know, he's definitely... If you're running a tank comp, say, Bastion, Dragoon, and you don't want to run Smog... Leviathan is the other, like, real damage tank. Bertha can also be considered, you know, but these three are, like, damage tanks. Uh, that's gonna take us out of the B tier, and that's gonna put us right in A tier, where I'm going to, first things first, say how the mighty have fallen. Mirage is in A tier. And I'm saying that because I think she's perfect now. They nerfed her damage... You know, she's counterable now. You're still going to run into a lot of powerful Mirage players who are going to kick your ass. Because she's still really fast, she's still really accurate. She's everything that makes Mirage Mirage, but she is a little bit less damage now. Which means that the Mirage has to work a little bit harder to get the pick on certain characters. No more can she, like, one-shot a blot. Unless she has, like, a full damage build and not a movement speed uh, range build. There's no way that she's going to, you know, two-shot um, uh, a ghost or two-shot a Freddy. She's definitely not going to two-shot a Freddy anymore because of that damage nerf. Mirage is, I feel, may, she could. There's a case that you could say she's still overtuned. Um, I think they did really well with how they balanced Mirage, um, and also as a sniper is going to be Firefly. I know I drew him like Spamton G Spamton here in the photo. I got a little creative with all of these, but um, Firefly is great for two reasons. One, um, he's got good range, good vision, 
and he's got the highest health out of all the snipers. It makes armor, like, you want to get armor because certain characters who are, like, high burst, like, if Arnie jumps on you, you don't have armor, he can one-shot you. But that 200 armor makes his first shot do way less damage. So even though it'll break your armor, it won't one-shot you and you kill the Arnie. So, obviously, his bulk is really good for that. But the second reason why he's good is because he count like Leviathan, he counters a lot of characters in the meta, including Mirage. If a Mirage, who, if he's aimed down, he's got about the same, maybe a little bit more range than Mirage. If both have scope, he definitely has more range than Mirage. Um, if Mirage taps him and is trying to, like, dot, bob and weave, he shoots faster than her now. That 100% <laughs> boost the fire rate is crazy for getting it tapped. Now, of course, if it's is someone who will kill you fast enough before you can even, you know, react, like if it's uh, Sparkle or Freddy and you get tapped, that 100% fire rate, it's not going to be enough to get another shot out. But if it's like someone who's got space between their shots, Mirage, Arnie, um, freaking even Cyclops, Firefly immediately becomes so good. So, against a lot of the meta, he does pretty damn well. Um, continuing with uh, that thought of in the meta and doing well, you got Bastion. Bastion can be oppressive in certain team comps. He's one of the best heroes for solo play, for um, King of the Hill. And I would say he's got, you know, some solid damage to him as well. Not great range, not great vision at all, but he can definitely hold his own in any fight. And the best part is, because of his huge armor pool and his damage reduction on being hit and hitting other you know, all that, and just being in combat, Bastion can change the way people fight, which no other hero really does that. If, the, if there's a Bastion against you, you immediately experienced players, you might not realize it, but something clicks in your brain where you're like, okay, this is a Bastion, I'm going to approach this differently. Unless you're playing like an invisible hero where you don't care. If you're playing Ghost, you don't really care if it's a Bastion. You might try to keep your distance a little bit more because if you do get caught out, you're dead. But you can still try to one-pump him if you have like an armor pen build. <sighs> yeah, Bastion is good. Bastion is really, really good. Um... I would say at later ranks, when people learn how to counter shields better, he's not as oppressive. Like, when you start, it might feel like he's overtuned. But as time goes on and you realize how to fight shields, he's a perfect, like, mini-boss for people who are learning the game. Because they see, oh, that's a Bastion, I should approach this differently. You know, his gun... It prevents people from challenging your shield a lot of the time. Uh, he does counter Angel and Hurricane, because even if they try to get around his shield, if he gets around their shield at the same time, which normally does happen, he will shred them so much faster. His gun commands a lot more respect than Angel or Hurricane, and does a lot better damage to armor. Um, next is Arnie. I just uh, did the Arnie video last week. Um, if you couldn't tell my high praise for him, uh, he does get countered by pyro heroes. They're way too big to get down, you know, 1,000 damage with armor at a time. Uh, so if he's going up against, like, Smog or someone, he's just gonna... He needs to take his time. If he's going up against Firefly, good luck. If you're going up against Doc, I mean, who plays Doc, actually. If you're going up against Sparkle or Freddy, you're, you're dead. Um, but against a lot of other heroes... Arnie is really good. Every sniper that isn't Firefly is very vulnerable to Arnie. Any scout who's not, like, already popping their stim, if they get jumped on, and even if they do have their stim popped, if they're not, like, immediately running away from Arnie when he jumps on them, if even if they are, if he hits them, he's faster than them now because of that 30% speed increase when hitting someone. And usually if you hit someone, they're dead. So Arnie can be really good. He just has a couple of counters that I think, like, every character here has a couple of counters. Bastion loses to Smog, for instance. Mirage loses to Firefly. Firefly, well, Firefly loses to Arnie, uh, no, Firefly beats the crap out of Arnie. Firefly loses to Hurricane. 
there's a lot of like very clear cut counters for perfect characters. And then there's characters that don't have like clear cut counters, but you can tell automatically that they're perfect in their design. Stalker is definitely perfect in his design. And by the way, I'm going to go back through some of these, um, but I'm looking at like who's left, and I'm thinking like, yeah, we're getting towards the overtuned uh, properties. But there's a case to be made for them. Uh, but Stalker, Stalker is really good. Stalker has some pretty high damage, decent armor penetration, great mobility, amazing ability, and just overall, like, it, it, he's got decent survivability as well. And he's easy to use. By the time you upgrade him high, he doesn't have movement and accuracy anymore. He's really good. And I think people know that, and at the same time, they will pick Ghost over Stalker, because Ghost can be a little bit faster, and he can maybe, che you know, squeeze out a few cheeky kills. Stalker's way more consistent than Ghost. If I'm playing against a good Ghost versus a good Stalker, I'm gonna focus the Stalker. Because the Stalker is going to kill me faster, and the Stalker is going to be more dangerous to my team. Because he's got that extra range, because he's got that extra bulk, so when he gets caught out, he can still fight. Whereas Ghost, his whole playstyle is not getting caught out, and instead doing that pretty good DPS when nobody knows you're there. Stalker is solid, and he doesn't have a ton of, like, immediate counters, because even if someone like Cyclops scans him, or Raven scans him, he's got base more range than either of them, and they have to, like, push into him and hit him first, whereas Ghost does not have as much range as either of them, and if he gets scanned, he's, he's has a hard time. Yes, Stalker and Ghost will both lose to, like, Bertha, for instance. If a Bertha is smart, um... Or is paired with, like, a Lynx so can hear them easier. Yes, Bertha is going to annihilate them. But, wow, these two are pretty solid. Um, and now, it's time for me to go into characters that are overtuned, and then characters that I have yet to form an opinion on. Um, I'm going to skip over Angel because originally I thought she was overtuned and now I need to like internally monologue of whether the shield nerf was enough. Dragoon is most certainly overtuned and I'm going to say, although solo it might not feel like it, in a group you can tell he's the most overtuned character. Making scouts, ambushers, other tanks, troopers, snipers, well snipers don't really give a crap except Mirage, but making anybody faster in this game is really good. It's a stupidly good ability, and normally you have to give up foot slots, which, you know, foot gear has some of the best things in it, in terms of, like, gears, but it also has the runner's shoe, so that's extra movement speed, so most people will vie for that instead of tech knee pads, which can just give upwards of an extra 10% more fire rate, and just up your DPS pure. But who cares when you can move faster, because movement speed is so important to cover more things in the map, to make sure enemies have less time to prepare for you. Yes, absolutely, Dragoon is overtuned. Solo? If you're playing solo, Dragoon is situational to perfect. His armor shredding gun is similar to, you know, Smog also shreds armor like crazy, but after... Smog shreds the armor, he can't do a lot of damage. Dragoon has great damage, and he can shred armor faster. So he just annihilates other tanks. Uh, counters Bastion, because he can just leap over the shield and then barrel stuff him. Um, Dragoon's also really bulky, so even if he's outranged, he can try to, you know, run or jump away. He's got, like Arnie, he's got that movement capability. Uh, he doesn't have as much burst damage. So where Arnie sh outshines Dragoon is, like, if Dragoon doesn't have teammates, I'd say they're about equal. Um, and the reason why is because Arnie can one-shot several characters. Dragoon can't really one-shot. He's gonna take damage from whoever he's fighting. But because he's so big, and he's decently fast, it won't matter that much. And the leap... I mean, what I, I talked so much about the Blink in the Arnie video. It's the same for Dragoon. Deal a clean 300 damage, be right on top of the person. That's a really good ability. Um, Link's... 
Lynx is better than Mirage. I've said it. Um, the reason why is because these two are the only two snipers who can have perfect movement, uh, perfect accuracy while moving. Yes, Lynx has to slow down to do it, but when the Mirage is trying to push into you and you have more range than her and you have more damage than her, it doesn't really matter that you're a little bit slower because of that you automatically have the advantage there as well as if she tries to back up or if she pushes in or if you know someone's going to push in you have that panic fire mode which is just crazy amounts of dps you have that um, amazing ability in rain of arrows originally i slept on that i'm like it's like a weaker grenade that you can position over things right yes the difference being you can make it explode sooner when you cancel it granted if you get flanked while using rain of arrows you're dead because you can't shoot while you're canceling it it still uses the ability which is a little bit of a weakness but even then just too much damage decent other stats like her mobility is totally fine she's not suffering any huge things in the survivability department she has enough health to survive you know a couple of stray shots and stuff like most snipers and she just has crazy amounts of damage the ability to counter thermal or um, or Bertha or the ability to counter like a shield wall. Rain of Arrows solves so many problems for you. The only issue with her is like she doesn't even really get countered by invisible because of that extra hearing. Uh, so you hear, you hear someone getting close, bang, you flick your fire rate, you turn to them. Oh, you know where they are because you have better hearing now. Okay, cool. The only thing that really messes her up is like if she does hit a firefly, the firefly is going to squeak out those extra three or four shots before she hits her next, she will die to firefly. She will lose sometimes to like a cheeky flank from uh, Sparkle or Freddy. Speaking of which, Freddy's absolutely overtuned. Um, He's got, I believe, the most health out of... He has a small amount of armor, but, like, considering the scout's job of taking continuous fire and trading with, like, you know, ambushers, tanks, trying not to get hit by snipers, it doesn't matter that his armor pool is small. He survives one heavy hit from that, and that's more than enough for him to counter, you know, most other shotgun heroes except Sparkle. Um, the, what can I say about Grenade that I haven't said for Sparkle or Firefly already? He is just, you know highest dps in the game and for no downside like you take a you take a hero like like sparkle her downside is none of her personal gears give her vision she is always in the dark information wise but if someone comes in that range that close range bubble of hers she's immediately in control and if she has six personal gears she has the ability to have three shots which lets her counter tanks now so with sparkle there is definitely counterplaying stuff you can out, you can snipe her easily freddy can still use vision speed like vision range as well as still having his fire rate and movement speed and damage and uh recoil reduction on all of his other gears his personal gears are really good and he's really good and like all the other ones he is able to pop his stim except he has better armor penetration and can just melt people faster because he's the best dps in the game what's not to like or hate about freddy right freddy is just there to be hated or loved, depending on if you play him or not, I guess. Um, controversial pick, Satoshi. I think is I've made the case for Satoshi being overtuned. The reason why he can just get absurd, like as a trooper, it's like his starting range. If he's just moving around, if that was the max range he had, he'd be totally balanced. But because when you aim down, so you get a scope and you aim down, you've better range and you use your sh uh, your force shield and you have range that goes to the end of your vision. Like, he can reach insane levels of range. Sure, his vision isn't amazing, but it's, like... It, it, it's, it's like, Doc's vision was okay for a trooper, and that's what he had as well. And then they gave Doc 50 more vision so that he could hit missiles at longer ranges a little more reliably. It was a quality-of-life thing. It, it wasn't game-changing. It didn't take him out of mid-tier or anything. Like, it took Leviathan out of mid-tier when they just bo bo boosted all of his damage. Satoshi is, you know... He's probably one of the counters to Freddy, because um, 
he will kill Freddy faster and at better range. Um, yes, he plays mostly defensively, but he has the ability to be offensive, unlike Blot. And he's not worried about one-shotting people. He's just worried about instantly deleting them because he fires fast and he does massive damage with good armor pen on every one of his shots. I, I think it kind of like speaks for itself that Satoshi is really, really good. And I'm making the case that he's not just perfect, he's a little overtuned. I think they can like cut back on something of his... Just something. Yes, he doesn't have amazing vision range. Yes, he doesn't have amazing movement speed. But he's really, really good on defense. And on offense, he can still push in and get to a spot where others need to push into him. If he, if he has the circle in Battle Royale or in any other mode, if he has the center of the circle, you, who can beat that? Okay, Lynx can try to use her ability on him, and her team might back her up. But Satoshi is to say in a 1v1 scenario, Lynx is not going to beat a Satoshi. If Satoshi has the circle. Now, if, if Lynx is the circle, now it's a question of can the Satoshi get in before he takes too many arrows? And the answer is depends on how good the player is. I've seen people like angle their shield sideways to give themselves more room to walk along before they get picked by the Lynx, playing around cover. You could definitely do it as Satoshi. Easier than Blot, for sure. Um, and his damage is just ridiculously good. Uh, and Levi. Take for instance that Levi is Slayer, except does not have the one-shot potential that Slayer does. Instead has more continuous damage, which is a slight downside, I will admit. But because of that, she is also, if she misses her first shot, she can still easily kill you. She's a lot easier to use, and you have to respect her range for longer. Because Slayer, if he doesn't get a kill, but say he hits a tank with his uh, thermal and he doesn't kill them, then the t the enemy team will just rush the Slayer. I I think of everything that might kill a Slayer. Dragoon, Arnie, Freddy can definitely get around whatever corners Slayer's hidden before that. Lynx, for sure. Satoshi can put up a shield. Um, Mirage can jump onto the Slayer. Okay, Firefly is a little in the dark. Bastion puts up his shield. Arnie jumps in. Invisibility doesn't really work on Thermal. Bertha could just suppress you. I bet... I bet... As, I bet... Yeah. I think this is kind of a 50-50. Scan heroes aren't going to do anything. Leviathan's not... Well, depending on if Leviathan can shoot something first and then spray through the wall, but probably not. Hurricane can win. Blot can win. These two are dead. But more than half the cast can beat Slayer if he misses his first shot. That's not the case for Levi. Levi is... Her thermal is a continuous threat. Now, it's not a burst threat. It's You can react to it easier than you can Slayer. But it's a continuous threat, which means you have to continuously respect her range. And it's so good. You can get more than one kill easier with this than you can with Slayer. And when thermal's not activated, Levi isn't nearly dead as quickly as Slayer is. She's way more versatile. And I don't know how they would under-tune her to make her perfect. I would recommend just like... Oh, wow, what would you even do? Because it's like you touch her range or her vision and you immediately get rid of the thing that makes her, like, useful. I think what you could do is... I think what, it, there's a few things you can do. Definitely get rid of the huge team healing buff on her personal gears. Because her being a trooper and getting that buff, like, with Doc it makes sense. Satoshi's a defensive character makes sense. Stalker, okay, yeah, sometimes he can be a little selfish. But for Levi, really, you needed to give it to her too? Oh well, right? Um, I guess what you could do is just, like, reduce the overall time that she has thermal for and then she would be perfect i think because her biggest issue is how long she can control an area with her thermal vision i think that's her that th i think that's the main reason why she's overtuned um angel i don't know whether to say she's overtuned or perfect with 
uh, Mirage, because she did get hit by the shield nerf. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think that quite matters when Stim just basically negates that speed loss. She can still. She's not nearly as fast as she could be before when she Stim and shielded, right? She can still be fast, but not fast enough to like dodge missiles or dodge uh, test bolt. By the way, I. I've not like I don't have tests, but I've seen tests, and I'm gonna say, first let me finish Angel. Sorry, I'm getting off topic. Almost done here, you know. Angel is most certainly the most interesting of the shield heroes because she doesn't really function as like the 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 big bulky juggernaut coming to kill you and you have to find a way around it no she is a really really fast tiny juggernaut that you still can't damage if she's mo mo maneuvering faster than you and when she pops stim she's most certainly maneuvering faster than you and she has health regen when that's it so when she is stim and shield up she's like kind of unbeatable if she doesn't have both of those things though like there's there's a case to be made that she is more along the lines of like this i wish you couldn't have shield and stim active at the same time then i would say angel would be perfect maybe even situationally perfect but because you can have both active and she's still a really fast shield character i think she's a little over tuned and now we have tess Tess is, in my opinion, mid-tier. I don't think she's that great. And here's the reason why. If you want a character that can take down a squad, like, with continuous damage, Tess's, like, bolt is not going to help you. Most of the time, the enemy team is going to have, like, a, a selfish ghost or a Freddy on the team who's always pushed away and is not going to be taking that alternate damage. Usually, you're going to be taking 1v1s any anyways as Tess, unless the enemy is, like, a death ball comp. If you're playing squad v squad or sabotage, Tess is the character to play. If you're playing Battle Royale or, God forbid, you're playing solo mode, Tess is not really a, an amazing character. Ball Lightning is so powerful. That does not mean that it makes her good, because ball lightning is not always up, and you certainly don't want your teammates in the ball lightning. A silence in any game, <coughs> excuse me, a silence ability in any game is really good, but is like balanced in other ways. Uh, some silences off the top of my head that I can think of, um, Torvald in Paladins, his silence ability requires him to stop using all of his other abilities and just be focused on this one person doing menial damage while he takes more. And it slows him down. Uh, KO in Val, he's got two different ways he can apply it. Uh, both of them are great. Both of them are great, but in order to do, like to use them, he's got to toss them out, he has to angle it right, and it can be easily destroyed uh, before it even activates. So the silence doesn't always go out. Tess, uh, the the balance of her silence is it also silences her teammates, which is unique in as far as like get rid of your abilities go, but it doesn't mean it's great. Especially like the amount of times where I'm playing like like I like if I'm playing Doc and there's a Mirage and I have an easy missile lineup and then Tess pops her uh, ball lightning. Well, great. Now my missile's gonna explode on that and damage us instead, and we lose the goddamn fight. Thank you so much, Tess. If I'm playing, like, an invisible hero or a jump hero, and Tess puts that in between the teammates, it's like, well, great. Now you've cut off my main route that I was gonna take to, to kill these people. Shield heroes get annihilated by Tess. That much is certain, because every shield hero rely except maybe like blot and satoshi let's let's not count for it let's talk about deployable shields they all rely on specifically one thing and that is their continuous dps against a target while they have a shield up so they're not taking anything bastion hurricane and angel all have a shield they put up 
Angel needs to reload often, even with the hand gear, even putting more bullets in the clip. Say you're up against a really big character, or the enemy has team healing, you need to reload once at, uh, to take someone out sometimes. And the shield protects you to do so. If you're going up against Tess, you can't do that, and she is going to kill you first. If you're Bastion and you go up against Tess, she will outrange you, she will annihilate you. Uh, if you are Hurricane and you're going up against Tess, good luck. Your shotgun, is, Hurricane without shield, is the worst character in the game, as I previously said. His range is pitiful, um, his overall, like, his overall stats, like his shield and health, are not enough to withstand the damage you're going to take before you're point blank without a way to get in like Artie does. So Tess does have some clear-cut victories that she can get against enemies. What she can't stop is just high burst damage. Tess versus Satoshi. Satoshi wins. Tess versus Freddy. You can bet Freddy wins. Tess versus any sniper in the game. Any sniper in the game wins. Tess versus Sparkle. Sparkle wins. Tess versus Dragoon or Arnie. Dragoon or Arnie will win. Tess versus Lynx. Lynx easily wins. Um... Tess versus Leviathan, how many Tesses have run into me as Leviathan and thinking that because you're destroying my turrets, I, somehow you're going to win the fight. Leviathan is dangerous now to be in continuous fire, and I kill you faster. So, yeah, Tess has some good parts to her. She is most certainly nothing to write home about. Considering the fact that Lynx is now uh, achievable and is far better, I'm gonna have to say that this is, she, you could make a case that, oh, situationally perfect, but the situation is everybody she's fighting is, like, very ability reliant, and as soon, like, they're all playing shield heroes, which, to be fair, you know what, I'm gonna move her, I'm gonna move her up to situationally perfect, because if you're playing in sabotage or squad v squad, where the enemies are going to be very ability reliant, they're almost all gonna play shield heroes, and, you know, play as, you know, maybe a Mirage or a Freddy in there as well, but generally speaking, they're all going to be balled up and, and continuous fire, Tess is an amazing hero to counter that. Outside of that, she's very not anything to write home about. So, this is my um, my tier list for Bullet Echo Heroes. I'm going to, before I sign off here and say, you know, thank you for sitting with me this long and, uh, you know, hearing my ramblings, the ramblings of an incoherent madman. Um, thank you, you know, um means a lot that you've uh, listened to my opinion for this long. Uh, and I'm going to reorganize these a little bit. Starting, I can't reorganize Smog anymore. He's alone down here. Um, I think, yeah, Doc at the bottom of it. Uh, I would say Blot over Hurricane. Yeah, Blot over Hurricane. Um, who would I put under Tess? Um, I'd maybe put Slayer under Tess. Um... Leviathan here, Ghost, Ghost over Raven and uh, Cyclops, just because they counter him doesn't mean that he's a little bit more viable uh, in overall scenarios. Um, Sparkle under Raven. Mm. Yeah, Sparkle under Raven. Um, and Bertha at the top, because Bertha can be overtuned if she's got some friends. Um, Stalker on the bottom, no, Stalker not on the bottom, Stalker in the middle, let's put Bastion on bottom, Arnie, uh, Firefly, Stalker, Mirage. And my, my thought, my thought process behind that is, Mirage is still really amazing, Stalker's pretty, uh, he's pretty up there as well. Firefly's biggest claim to fame is that he counters Mirage, but against a lot of these other heroes, like, he beats Arnie, I feel like he should be above, but against, like, a Stalker, against a Bastion, I feel like he's not quite as much. He only takes out two of these. Arnie loses to one, two, and uh, I would say three, and only beats one, and Bastion overall, it just has, like, the most losing matchups here. Um because three of them can just ignore him, and the other one's Firefly. 
Uh, for the top, I'm going to put Angel on the very bottom of Overtune because she's the closest to perfect. Um, it, it, hers, I think, is a, the smallest thing to adjust. Uh, followed by Levi, then Satoshi. Dragoon on top. I'm not going to settle on that. Dragoon's speed aura definitely needs to be like the most prominent thing to address. But then where to put Lynx and Freddy? I'm thinking I might put Freddy above Lynx. Just because it, just because Lynx can outwit her opponents, and there's a few things that need to be tuned down. Freddy is just way too much right now, and doesn't need to outwit his opponents. He just steamrolls them. He just runs right through them. I think that's exactly where everybody needs to be. Um, if you disagree with this, um, I guess you can find this specific tier list um, on tier maker check uh, I don't know your bullet echo discord or something I don't care particularly um, I just did this because I enjoyed making the funny pictures uh, and I also have strong opinions about where characters belong so yeah that's, this is the end this is finalized take a screenshot of it frame it put it on the wall next to the diploma and we're good to go so thanks a lot